Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to take a look at the Quick Flight B1 that was recently released. That's Quick with a K-W-I-K. And they had previously made the B2, though I didn't pick that up. And this Quick Flight B1 should not be confused with the Vertavia B1, which I decided not to get because it seemed like it was just a mild upgrade of Vertavia's previous B1 that was available for FSX. So I decided not to go with that and but this one looked a little bit better especially in the cockpit and so I picked it up and it was 26 bucks from Sim Market and uh, we've got some liveries it does have very suspicious liveries uh, there are some weird liveries that come with it pink camel star, stars and stripes there's some eccentric eccentric liveries white tiger yellow lion spooky uh, <laughs> spooky two uh, Desert Storm, well, th that's not that weird, except I think it has Desert Storm written on it. Uh, but uh, And then the normal ones at the bottom here, uh, more or less normal. I don't know if they've got something weird on it. I'll just go with the Doolittle 80th Anniversary, seems safest. And yeah, so I'm going to take it outside and we're going to take off from Nellis and see how it goes. Alright, so here's the cockpit, and this was a pleasant surprise. It looks really nice. Uh, very clear views from this particular viewpoint. And, yep, it's got a lot of detail. These uh, multifunction displays do have different options. For a few things. Engine. Distance to ground. I think there's a terrain one. And that's a weather one. So yeah, uh, the autopod stuff is on the left there. Though there's some knobs at the bottom to help it out. And it's even got a uh, full sort of panel up there. I haven't gone through the startup procedure. Uh, some things do not have uh, a functionality, but a lot of it does. One thing that did not have functionality is the flight director knob there, right in the center, or the PFR command set, those don't have functionality. So, yep, yeah, one thing that does have functionality is the wing sweep, uh, but the wing sweep only works between 0.6 and 0.8 Mach, otherwise it'll go all the way back at Mach 0.8 and it'll go all the way forward below 0.6, so yeah, you might as well just leave it. I have noticed that there is a serious pause here at Nellis when I try to fly it and that might be because other people are trying to fly it. So detail wise, it's pretty good but I feel like some of the seams are a little bit too deep but maybe they're like that. I haven't been up close to a B1, I've been up close to a few other planes but not a B1. It's got a good dusty look to it. It's a bit hard to get off the ground. I'm at 180 knots right there. It's very hefty. The feel of it's pretty hefty. I of course like the B1 a lot because of its looks. The swing wing is always nice of course. Really long wing. It's a hefty handful, but it's actually fairly pleasant to fly at low altitudes. And since it was sort of a terrain following plane, that makes sense. Uh, it had a terrain following computer, and it was designed specifically to go at low altitudes. They decided to dump the whole business of it going faster in favor of it being able to fly at really low altitudes under radar. It has a good feeling of stability, not so much for maneuverability. So the wing sweep will resist you if you're at less than 0.6, like I can't move it right now. But I'm pretty close to 0.6, it's 0.58, it's the top left number on the multifunction display there, 0.59. I'm not on afterburner, that's why it's not accelerating that much. 0.6. Then I can move it. 
and it tries to go all the way back initially. So between 0.6 and 0.8 you can have it partially swept. Las Vegas is a little bit choppy here. We are flying fairly quickly over it. I'm going at 480 knots indicated. And this is as hard as I can turn. I'm pulling up on it as well as turning. This is the best I can do. Highest IG turn at the speed that I can manage. So yeah, it's not going to be crazy maneuverable, it's about right. I'll let you judge the sounds for yourself as we see the wings sweep all the way back because we've gone past Mach 0.8 and I'll just sort of pour it on, though there's not a whole lot of point at low altitude to try and use afterburner or anything. There's a limit to how fast it can go at low altitude, after all. We're not short on fuel, though. One nice thing about this is it can sustain decent speeds for a long period of time. It gives you the airliner feel without the airliner speeds, <laughs> if you will. Well, except for Concorde. Concorde can beat this, obviously. But this is probably more fun, to, it's definitely more fun to fly than Concord. Ooh. At low altitude, you know, Concord really makes you feel a little bit worried about it. Uh, the V1, not so much. It feels right at home down here. I'm tempted to do a long flight with it just at low altitude because we're going 600 knots indicated right now. I probably have about three hours of fuel like this. But I could turn off the afterburner and probably... Oh, I can probably turn off the afterburner and... Oh! Oh, I think I might have overheated it. Because they just did that all on their own. I think I did... Maybe it has an afterburner limit. That's fine. I was about to say, I think we could probably sustain pretty high speeds without using the afterburner. They did say that they had a lot of uh, realism modeling in, in it. I haven't really plumbed the depths of all that. I've just been having fun flying it. And uh, I think it's a good plane to have fun flying. But, again, it's not going to turn on the dime or anything. Well, I got a little bit of afterburner back on, but it's intermittent. It's like firing and then stopping. And it's not firing as much as it was before. So, I don't know. I, that maybe, I think that's probably intentional, but I'm not entirely sure how that all works. From here, we've got a really good view. It should be really easy to land with the eye point in this plane. Oh, that is a turn I can't make. It's easier to follow the road when you're out here, of course. That is not a turn this can make very easily. It doesn't climb super fast. It climbs reasonably fast, but not not like a fighter jet. Well, let's see if I can pour on the afterburner again. Well, I don't know how the afterburner is going to feel about it. 14,000 feet in climbing. It's just a really good looking plane.
Interesting, as we climb, the fuel flow increases right now. So the afterburner is consuming more and more as we go up. Not necessarily what you would normally think, especially since we're not accelerating. And when I level out, it's actually consuming less as we accelerate. So I'm not too sure about that. It's possible, but I'm just not sure about that. That's usually the opposite of how things work, but I can see how they might want the afterburner to like compensate for low speeds during a climb. It's not impossible, but I'm not sure about it. Every so often it flicks the flap thing. And I don't know why. I'm not doing that. And it won't let me actually keep it at retracted. That's a slat. But we shouldn't be going slow enough for the slats to be needed at 300 knots indicated, so I'm not sure. Well, let me try and level out to make sure it's not using those. Yeah, it says 2 degrees there. We don't need to do that. I mean, the wings are swept, so I guess maybe it's a thing that when they're swept it uses the slats a little bit sometimes, so that they can keep swept. Lots to figure out. The fuel and fuel floor are over there, and there's a whole bunch of fuel management stuff. Okay, we've hit Mach 1 at 30,000 feet. It doesn't really suddenly dip down the way some planes do. I was descending though, so that makes it easier. But presumably the wing sweep will sort of prevent it from having too much of a jerk at that point. Mach 1.12. It can't really get too far beyond that. Well, we'll see how it does. We'll go up a little bit and keep accelerating if we can. It just has a discrete crack when you go out into the external view when it's gone past Mach 1. It doesn't have the thing where it's a Mach cone and it constantly cracks when you pass through the Mach cone. So if I go back in, you'll hear that, but then it doesn't keep that going. So uh, the autopilot, you can... Oops. You can see the setting on the multifunction display up there. Uh, use this knob to try and pull it to a decent speed. It maxes out at 440 though. So yeah, I can't set at more than 440 knots indicated. Okay, we'll try 45,000 feet. So autopilot on over there. And we'll go altitude hold. Auto throttle. Okay, and it's turning. So, autopilot working out. We'll see. Though, uh, you know, it's supposed to. Oh, I changed the altitude to an altitude I did not want. I wanted 45,000. I had set it to 45,000. I don't know how it got down there. It's much quieter once it's past the speed of sound. <laughs> Except for the sonic boom. Mach 1.2 right now. We've gotten up to Mach 1.3 so far. We'll see how it does when we level up. So I'll link uh, msfsaddons.com page about the plane in the video description. That'll have links to Sim Market and uh, another location. Oh, Anybuilds where you can buy it. The Anybuilds website has it as well. All right, we are at 45,000 feet, Mach 1.25. It doesn't really seem to want to get too much faster than this. So Mach 1.3 is basically where it's gonna stick to. That's about as good as it's gonna do. It can go higher than this, but uh, judging from how it's done, it'll just stick to the same Mach number without 
really accelerating too much past it. Which is probably correct. There are engine limitations, among other things. As we are crossing the Sierra Nevada, I think. Well, I'm way north of Edwards Air Force Base. It's gonna take me a while to get back down. I have no doubt that this thing can land just fine, uh, because it was falling. I mean, I was flying it right above the terrain really easily, so I think it's gonna be pretty easy to land. So I'm just gonna conclude with it flying like this. Maybe let's see. Is it? Ah, that's nicer, I think. All right. Yeah, I'll conclude with this view, which is nice for the quick flight v1 lancer and i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time